Today, we're excited to launch Langsmith Agent Builder. Langsmith Agent Builder is a completely new type of no-code agent experience. You build and describe your agent in natural language, incorporating memory so it adapts and learns over time alongside you. There's no drag and drop, there's no visual workflow complexity, it's all just natural language. It's dead simple, easy for anyone to pick up. The hardest part about building an agent in Langsmith Agent Builder is writing the prompt. It needs to be pretty detailed. And so we've added a bunch of tools in Langsmith Agent Builder to make it easy to do so. We've added meta prompting, which takes in your initial idea and then asks you follow-up questions and expands upon that to create an initial detailed prompt. But prompting isn't static and it evolves over time as you use your agent and work with it to overcome challenges. And that's where the idea of memory comes in. Your agent needs to remember those interactions it's had with you and it should update its prompts and instructions in memory bank over time. And that's exactly what happens in Langsmith Agent Builder. Let's see all of this in action. I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna create a new agent. Now I could create it manually or I could use this agent builder to help me create it. Let's use the agent builder. I wanna create a daily briefer, something that knows what's gonna happen in my day and then send me a report about it at the start of the day. So we can see here that this agent will look for the tools and triggers that it has and then read more about them. That way it can tell me what I can and can't do. So if I ask for something that's impossible with the given tools and connections that it has, it will just tell me that rather than leading me down a false path. Here you can see that it asks a few follow-ups about what I want to achieve. This is really useful because my initial description was actually not that specific. So this will help narrow in and help the agent builder create a better agent. So let me respond to them right now. I want it to read my calendar. I would like to receive it via Slack. And it should be delivered at like, let's say 6 a.m. each morning. Now the agent takes these answers and thinks about whether it needs any more info, and it does. So it needs to know my Slack email or user ID so that I can send the direct message. I'm not gonna use my real email for this. Let's say foo at langchain.com, and let's submit the answer. Now it's gonna think whether it needs any more info, and it doesn't, so now it's gonna start building the agent. Now we can see here that the agent has been successfully generated. Before creating it, it wants me to connect to Google and Slack. This is important. These agents often require connecting to internal tools or APIs, and we want to give them the proper auth and credentials to do so. And that is exactly what this is going to do. So I'm gonna go do that and then come back here. We can see here that after I authed, I can now go ahead and create the agent. All right, so this is just what the agent is. It's these instructions, and then it's the trigger. The trigger is what kicks off the agent. So I can see here that it's getting kicked off at 6 a.m. every day. And then the tools that it has access to. I also have over here a little test chat. So this is useful because I can basically run it in a debug mode, where it pauses before it executes tools. This is helpful when I'm trying to just get a sense of whether the agent is doing what I expected to do. So let's keep that on and let's try it out. Let's say go and watch it kick off a daily brief. We can see that it's checking my Google Calendar. Great, let's continue. And now it wants to send me a Slack DM with a private message. Let's take a look at the contents of this message. Now this is where memory comes in. So let's imagine that as I'm watching this agent about to send this message, I actually want it to do something different. I can just tell it in natural language in the chat. So let's say something like, it should always write a poem. We can see here that it now wants to read a file. What is this file? It's actually the memories of the agent. So this file here corresponds to the instructions that you see over here. And this is how memory in this agent works. So I'm gonna let it continue and I'll see that it will actually try to update the file. There we go. It's calling update or it's calling edit. If we go in, we can see the new string and the old string and then the new string, it says always close the briefing with a short uplifting poem. So let's continue. And now it's writing a new Slack message. And if we look at the Slack message, it should contain a poem. There we go. 
We can also verify this by just refreshing this page. When we do that, if we look at the instructions here, we can see here that there are the instructions about ending the briefing with a short uplifting poem. So this is how memory comes into the agent and is useful for updating the agent as you interact with it, because it's unlikely that you're going to create it perfectly the first time around, and it's going to want to learn from its interactions with you. Now, this is just a test chat. And so to actually use the agent, I can click here, and I'm brought to this panel where I interact with the agent. Not only can I interact with it in a given conversation, but I can also take a look at all the threads that it has access to. Now, because I just created this agent, there aren't any threads. But let's go to an agent that I had already created. Now, this is a different daily briefer that I had already created a few days ago. I can see here that I have a list of threads. Some of these threads require my attention. So if I look at the different thread types, I can see that there's idle, which means that the agent has already run. There's busy, which means the agent is currently running. There's interrupted, which means the agent has stopped and needs my attention or needs my help with something. And then there's threads that have erred. So required attentions are ones that are interrupted. If I look at this, I can see that it's notified me that I actually need to auth with my Google Calendar. I actually didn't do that for this agent, and so it got stuck. And so rather than just fail, it actually used this built-in tool called Notify User to basically put this thread and say, hey, I need help. So this is an example of what we call the agent inbox. And this is where you can monitor your agent as it's working. It can reach out to you. It can help with stuff. And then as you interact with it here, it still has memory enabled. So it will learn over time as well. That's an overview of our no-code agent builder. As mentioned before, this is not a visual workflow builder. It is an actual agent builder. It leans into the autonomy of these agents, provides them with memory as well so they can update through their interactions with you. This is available in private beta today. So if you don't see it enabled, just sign up for the waitlist, and we'll let people off of it accordingly. Thanks for watching.